This will be our 82nd lesson in the book of Ephesians. We're going to be in verses 18 and 19 tonight. <clears throat> now this text is a very important one that we'll be dealing with. Has regard to the body of Christ as compared to individual members of the body. <clears throat> the Lord has given us some thoughts about this recently that have been growing. In my judgment, there has been an inordinate emphasis upon individuals, mm -hmm. and it has not netted very good results at all. In fact, I'm going to say it has weakened the body of Christ. The view we are given is this. <clears throat> Satan has an army comprised of a plurality of personalities. They're not just like slaves. See, a lot of Christians are really What's the word to use? No-brainers. They really don't contribute anything to the body of Christ. They're just dried up grapes hanging on the vine. But Satan doesn't have anybody like this. Some of these personalities are principalities. I mean, they have genuine authority. And powers. Rulers of the darkness of the world and spiritual wickedness in high places. These forces are not depicted as concentrated on an individual, yeah. unless it be someone like Paul, who was making major inroads yeah. into their into the citadel of the devil. Now the point of our text is that the Lord Jesus has called us to be a good soldiers, good soldiers. Concerning the ministry of Jesus, we are the body of Christ. Concerning the warfare, we're the army. Mentioned in Revelation 19, 19, his army. Went forth with his army. We're talking now about the church as an army. I don't know that I know of many churches that could be depicted as an army. Amen. But that's a proper view. Soldiers are part of an army. They don't go out and fight independently. That's right. Part of an army. Our warfare is personal, but it's not primarily personal. We don't want to consider our association to Jesus just exclusively in view of us as persons or us as a, as a group. That's going to require extraordinary discipline to break out of this line of thought. Yes, amen. Amen. Maybe you found that out already. Yeah. It's hard to break this line of thinking. Mm -hmm. Just on people, on individuals, on persons, on you. It's hard to break out of this, but let me tell you, we've been called into something bigger Dead any one person. Amen. Amen. Got to stretch ourselves because there's been an inordinate emphasis in the in the modern church. There's been an, an inordinate mean that means unlawful mm -hmm. emphasis on people, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's not yeah. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. And somebody's got to speak up about this. Amen. Amen. Because at present, if you talk about this, you'll be considered kind of a spiritual freak. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like you're a reactionary of some kind. If, exam for example, if I think of my shield of faith as only protecting me, I've missed something. We're part of an army. I'm going to show you tonight that your shield can protect somebody else. That's confirmed in Paul's instruction to the churches, where he would cast down false doctrines, 
What do you think he was doing? He was using his shield to deflect these things that had been hurled at the body of Christ. Their shields were laying on the ground someplace. He saw where it was going. He took up his shield. Listen, brethren. There are some people that cannot be helped unless you engage in the battle. You can talk to your blue in the face and pray about the correction of the situation. If you pray correctly, this is fine. But at some point, you've got to enter into the battle. We're fighting an enemy. And he's form formidable. So now tonight we're going to be exposed to some body work. <laughs> some body work that needs to be done. <coughs> Here's our text. <coughs> Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. Oh, those are not the words of a fledgling minister who doesn't know right from left. Those are the words of a the premier apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now he's still writing about the whole armor of God. He's going to tell us something about prayer in our time that's very rare. Praying always. <coughs> Some versions read, at all times. That's the New American Standard Bible. On all occasions, that's the NIV. At all seasons, at the American Standard. In every situation, that's God's Word Bible. At every opportunity, that's the New American Bible. Pray at all times, that's the Living Bible. With unceasing prayer, that's Weymouth. Keep on praying, that's Williams. At every time, that's the American Apostolic Bible. Never stop praying, that's the Contemporary English Bible. And on every occasion, in every season, that's the Amplified Bible. What's all that mean? What's always mean? It does not indicate every minute of every day. I've heard some very simplistic explanations of praying always, I'll tell you. People talk or they have no business talking at all. They're just hurling up confusion into the air. Always is referring to a specific occasions that arise that require prayer. There are some conditions preaching won't help. There are some conditions a testimony is not going to help. Only prayer can help. And you've got to be able to detect when these kind of occasions arise. And praying always means when prayer is the thing that ought to be done, you see it and you do it. Every opportunity. <laughs> In other words, you don't seek to approach anything without regard to prayer. Prayer's not like, if nothing else works, we'll pray. Like one poor soul once said, we need to pray for this. It looks like nothing else will work. And someone said, no, no, has it come to that? Prayer. There are opportunities to prayer, to pray, that some people think are opportunities to testify. That's not what they are. Prayer. Praying at all times. How should we pray? <coughs> With all prayer. All prayer? Other versions read all kinds of prayer. That's pretty good. Every prayer and request, all manner of prayer. And that's pretty good. All manner of prayer and entreaty. See, there's different kinds of prayer. Mm -hmm. <coughs> there's praise prayer. Mm -hmm. The expression of insight into the nature and purpose of God is in 1 Peter 1, 3, where he says he thanked God about them, how they had called him, and so forth. 
And there's such a thing as secret prayer. You go in your closet and shut the door and nobody else knows. There's that kind of prayer. There's Thanksgiving prayer. <coughs> Recognition of benefits and gratefully giving thanks. And I give a couple of texts there. There's petitions or requests where you're asking for something specific, yeah. Amen. not general. Such as Ephesians 1, 5, 15, he made a petition, supplication, he told you exactly what he asked the Lord to do. There's united prayer, a group of people together pray with one accord, such as illustrated in Acts 4. There's a prayer of faith, that's a prayer that's guaranteed an answer. No prayer of faith will not realize what was asked. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. Amen. It's guaranteed. <coughs> you obviously can't pray it at will. <laughs> There's a prayer of agreement where two or more agree is touching anything. That kind of prayer. There's prayers of intercession, pleading for somebody else, standing in their behalf. There's penitential prayers where people are repenting. Psalm 51 is that kind of prayer. There's what I call ejaculatory prayers or instant and spontaneous prayers. Like when Peter sees, he said, Lord, save me. That's, that's that, that kind of prayer. Well, Paul says, use all prayer. Learn to be versatile in all of these kinds of prayer. We can be versatile in our prayers. Amen. Some people fall into a rut when it comes to praying. You know, it's thank you for the food and bless the day, and that's pretty much it. And uh, you can be versatile in your prayer. Now, if you're a warrior and you're using all prayer, you've got to be versatile. There's certain kinds of prayer... Someone's in prison, and uh, the gospel is being stopped, and that may not be the time to offer a thanksgiving prayer or a personal repentance prayer. <laughs> That's if you've got to focus it on a situation. All prayer. There's matters, personal matters. There's fellowship matters. That's all here. There's glo the global church. Matters. Brethren we know from other countries and clusters of brethren under certain trials. See, there's a whole host of things. All prayer. All prayer and supplication and supplication. Petition or request or deep desires and entreaty. Those are alternative ways of saying that. Supplication. See, now this is right here, right here now. Where it's something that people are very sloppy about supplicating. Mm -hmm. Seems almost like they're afraid to they're afraid to ask for something in particular. Mm -hmm. They just pray in generalities, all, just generalities all the time. Mm -hmm. I go to Walmart. I I give the guy a hundred dollars. I say I'd like a hundred dollars worth of groceries, so he fills my basket with onions and sends me home. I needed to be more specific. Sometimes we don't receive answers because we're not specific yeah. for the thing we're praying about. Yeah, of course, good. yes. In order for people to be specific, <coughs> they had to have thought about right. thought That's the exactly thing through, right. and actually arrive at the at what needs to be That's done. Right. Here's some insight. That's right. some insight. <coughs> Supplication. Now, while the early disciples were waiting for the promised Spirit that Jesus said would come in a few days, they didn't know when. What were they doing? It says they were continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. It must have had to do with what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. You'll be endued with power from on high in a few days. It must have been supplicated, asking, petitioning and asking. Many believers are uh, suffering from spiritual malnutrition. And they need somebody to intercede for them. They, they just can't do it by themselves. You may say, well, you just need to pray. Well, I can appreciate that, but what about, how about you? Mm -hmm. Coming to Jesus about this, about the centurion. Mm -hmm. How about you stand in the gap? Mm -hmm. You feel competent to do that? Mm -hmm. Well, you can be. Supplicating, <clears throat> not asking casually, 
seeing something and going for it before God, let your requests, yes. see that's what a supplication is, it's asking or a request. Let your requests, mm -hmm. what do you want? Yeah. I understand you've got to sift through your soul and make sure this is in accord with God, yeah. which he's going to clarify in the next phrase. Mm -hmm. Supplications. In the spirit, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's got to be in accord yeah. How do you supplicate in the Spirit? Well, you pray when you're walking in the Spirit. Yeah, that's right. You pray when you're in communion with the Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah. You pray when you're living in the Spirit. See, in the process of doing it, that's it that in that process you pray. Or some people don't know whether they're in the Spirit or out of the Spirit. I'm, I, I tell you that the majority of professing Christians have no idea at all when you say walk in the Spirit or live in the Spirit. Yeah, that's right. yeah. When you say don't live in the flesh, they have no cogent idea what you're talking about. Maybe you remember when you didn't know. They had no idea what flesh meant. They had no idea what living in the Spirit meant. But see... You've been called into an army where you have to know these things. Amen. This is part of being in Christ. is being intelligent about so you know when you're in the Spirit and when you're not. You can be that sensitive, believe me. <coughs> Some other versions read, pray in line with what the Spirit wishes. I don't like the way it says it, but it's just got the right idea. <coughs> This is the Holy Spirit, so your request, of course, must be holy. Amen. And watching <coughs> thereunto with all perseverance, watching in this posture of praying always, watching with all perseverance. Other versions read with perseverance and petition, or be alert and always keep on praying. Keep alert and always persevere in supplication. Keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance. Now we can't really say enough about staying spiritually alert. Mm -hmm. Some people are more aware of the traffic outside than they are of what's going on in the spirit world. Right. Yep. They can go down to range line and they know exactly what's going on there. They can tell you whether it's crowded or whether it's not. When it comes to things of the Spirit, they can't tell you what's going on. Yeah. They can't tell you principalities and powers are at play here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of congestion here at this yeah, particular yeah. area. We've got a lot of congestion and nobody's able to move with any force or speed yeah. forward, but they can't detect that. Yeah. That's what he's dressing here. You're going to be a powerful prayer uh -huh. and you're called to be one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you've got to know what's going on all perseverance, either powerful spirits or forces you're up against. And if you drop your hands, they'll wallop you. Mm -hmm. yeah. They won't miss, now they won't miss a chance. Mm -hmm. You've probably learned that already by hard experience. Yeah. But if you drop your hands, you drop your shield, you hang down your sword, they're not going to say, all right, time out. There's no time out. If Paul would have done this, not only would have he been attacked, but the ones he was standing for. Oh, yes. Amen. Now let's get down to what the meat of this thing. <laughs> Watch in there, too, with all perseverance mm -hmm. and supplication for all... Oh, no, not, maybe for your favorite saints. That'd be, that'd be it. Huh? For your favorite saints. Hmm? Or for the saints you pers personally know. Yeah. Or the saints in your fellowship. All saints. Amen. Some other versions read, For all God's people, for all the holy ones, for all God's holy people, all believers everywhere, so forth. The word translated saints, I like the word, means a holy thing or a saint. 
The academic definition is a, it is a person that is eminent or known for piety, as outward godliness, and virtue. Is someone consecrated or sanctified to God? Holy is just a good idea. Hold the holy ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting he didn't say and pray for all men everywhere, although he does. Yeah. That mm -hmm. exhortation is given. Yeah. But not at this, not when it comes to warfare. Yeah. When it comes to yeah. warfare, mm -hmm. we're not a praying for the lost, we're praying for the saved. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We preach to the lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. We pray for the saved. Yeah. Amen. Praying for them. The word saints from Matthew through Revelation is mentioned 61 times, and it always refers to holy people. The Psalms mentions it several times also. Sometimes in the Old Scripture, saints refers to angels. Our text is referring to praying for the saints of God. Prayer and supplication for all Saints, we're not talking about praying for the lost. We're not saying that's wrong. We say that's not what we're talking about here. Amen. It's true we're to pray for those that despitefully use us. Mm -hmm. I can even give you an example of someone that did. Here's Paul praying for someone that despitefully used him. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his work. So how was he? Some people would think that's wrong to pray that, but this is what he prayed. Amen. He did say, oh, Lord, forgive him. I forgive him. That's what people are being taught today. Yeah. Amen. They are being taught that today. Uh -huh. People sin against you and then you just forgive them. You just do it because they know you feel a lot better when you forgive them. I'll feel a lot better when they repent. Yeah, amen. And then and only then will I forgive them. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm ready to forgive them. I'm not going to harbor hatred toward them. Amen. But I'm going to say, Lord, don't forget this. Yeah, amen. What's going on? They're making it harder for your people, Lord. That's the kind of stuff you... That's the kind of stuff you pick up That's if you right. hang around the modern church. That's right. And you pick it up, you won't even realize it either. <laughs> the people pray for all saints. See, first of all, we're related to these people. That's right. Amen. They're part of the they're part of the household of God. See, that's why one reason we're part of the household. That's so we're praying for them. They are part of the body of Christ, of which we also are members. See, so we're, we're related to these people. They're our brethren in Christ. They're the fold of Christ, of which we too are sheep that are in the fold. They're fellow kings and priests. Together with all saints, we are members one of another. So by virtue of these associations, we have a vested interest in these people. Amen. More than just friendship. Mm -hmm. It's more than that. If Jesus does not forget them, neither can we. Amen. We must not become so absorbed with our own interests that we neglect the rest of the household of faith. Forget about them. Now this also assumes that the saints are an informed people. They, they've been hearing about their brethren worldwide. The real people of God have some degree of understanding concerning the rest of the household. They make it their business to keep up on what's, what's happening to the people of God. Some of this knowledge is common knowledge. We were all tempted. We know that. We all experience conflict with the world. We know that. And with the flesh. We know that. These are issues regarding the good fight of faith. But there's other specific matters that may come to our attention. Paul himself knew about the condition of the churches. And he prayed. He, he recorded some of his prayers. Be because he knew the condition of the churches. Now let's 
Let's take our own fellowship as an example here. Through family relations, we know of brethren in other cities as well as our own. We've gained personal acquaintance, for example, with some believers in Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. through Brother Larry Jamo, in Pakistan, through Brother Mukadam Zia and Brother Kuram Bashir, in India, by Brother Samuel Thomas, mm -hmm. in Kenya, by the Lulele family, and in Thailand, by the Morris family. We've become acquainted mm -hmm. with these brethren. Now, conditions are not ideal in these locations. You may be tempted to think, well, we shouldn't be dabbling with that. Well, I'm going to say that this is not bad thinking. Some of these situations, the teaching of Babylon the Great is flourishing mm -hmm. over there. Why? Because the powers of darkness have not been held at bay. Yeah, that's right. Somebody hasn't been wrestling. Somebody in other places, some other saints haven't been wrestling mm -hmm. for all saints everywhere, supplicating for them, mm -hmm. raising up in cipher petitions for them. See, there's a warfare to be fought. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm persuaded we have learned about these other people. <laughs> we haven't learned about them so we can see their deficiencies. Mm -hmm. They've got them. We've learned about them so we can wrestle against principalities and powers that have caused these deficiencies. Well, I want you to see this. This is a... If you involve yourself with other world countries and you gauge whether you were successful or not by what happened when you were there, you have made a big mistake. Paul wasn't in Thessalonica long, was he? No. But look what happened, what he deposited there. Right. Amen. Yeah. And he prayed for, he told him he did. He prayed for these people. Mm -hmm. Supplication for all saints everywhere. We can employ the weapon of all prayer against the powers of darkness. Mm -hmm. We can be specific. Mm -hmm. All right, we know that in one particular area of Burkina of West Africa, Burkina Faso, the spirit of Babylon was there. What are we to do when we hear this? Go home and cry? We are to engage the weapon of all prayer mm -hmm. yeah. and out-wrestle these principalities and powers that are disseminating these airs. Why do you think God let us know this? Why do you think we became aware of it? It was because we know more mm -hmm. than they know. We have access to more than they presently do. And we're going to step up on their behalf yeah. and defend the field. Amen. That's what he's praying about. That's what, this, that's what this text is all about, brethren. It's possible that this is one of the primary reasons that we've had so many contacts. <laughs> We want to preach the word. Mm -hmm. We want to follow up with prayers and supplications for all saints. Now this kind of involvement can't be accomplished in a casual environment uh -huh. where people's interests are divided uh -huh. and the allegiance of people isn't consistent. Putting on the whole armor of God and praying all these with all prayer is something that for all the body of Christ is something that has got to be done if it's not done the people have been disobedient now it's that you really got to, got to get right down to that level we know that in the world at large God's people are scattered this text is one way of addressing that situation where the brethren are scattered some we don't even have access to but we have access to the throne that controls Amen. all these regions right. and to the Lord who's superior to these principalities and powers and we can pray for this spirit of Babylon to be broken mm -hmm. and thrown down to the ground yes Judah speaking of all these saints that we don't know and 
places throughout all the world, and I thought we can't be with them and fellowship with them when we're in this vile body, when we're in the flesh, but the prayer brings us together spiritually. <clears throat> it's, it's the prayer and supplication of all saints that gives us the unity with those saints that we can't see when we're in the flesh. Yes, yes. Part of the problem is that people see God as too small. This is the body of the host. It's going to take the entire aggregate of the church yep. from Adam to the last person whenever Jesus comes for it to be an adequate picture of the Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just... It, it, this is this is a big picture. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so, not only do we are we not restricted in our thoughts to just our our own congregation or just the churches of our nation or of our hemisphere and, and throughout the entire earth but now and we don't we don't wrestle the same for those that have gone on before but there's a sense in which we're connected to oh, yes. all of them amen it's just this is the part that happens to still be in mm -hmm. the flesh and wrestling against powers and principalities and, and dominions and stuff because we're still in a, a place of vulnerability. Amen. But mm -hmm. Jesus is is much, much bigger than, <clears throat> than what, who calls herself the church, has seen that he is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Brother Tony, good. The uh, Babylon that you're talking about over in, in uh, Africa and everything, that's the same virus we got here. Oh, yeah, I know it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, uh, I like what you said about that, mm -hmm. but then look at the situation we got here. Yeah, well, we, I don't see anything. I mean, you know, I'm looking at Babylon here. Yeah, well, that's because, and I'm thinking it's like, you know, what do we do with that here? We got to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to do the same I agree thing with that. Yeah. Now you take, maybe be more specific. All of you probably know people that have been hurt by the once saved, always saved doctrine. Yeah. Listen, brethren, it's time to start praying mm -hmm. that God will cast that thing down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're in Catholic territory, Mary Alatry, and the worship of Mary, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can rest. There's principalities and powers promoting these. Mm -hmm. And in our supplications, be specific. Throw this stuff down. We don't respect it. It's hurting people. Mm -hmm. yeah. The fact that we've been in some of these areas can help us to pray. I know personally I pray for the people that are in the situation that I used to be That's in right. quite often mm -hmm. because I know their uh, sincerity, a lot of them how, how their love, but they're blinded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, this, this is part of our weaponry. All prayer mm -hmm. is under God, but it's against these principalities and powers that are promoting these doctrines, some of principalities and powers are promoting immorality in in the church. Well, you do in your preaching, you do your teaching, you do everything you can, but then you've got to use this weapon of all prayer. These spiritual forces will not yield to human power. And wisdom, and I think the church has been very grossly deficient in this area. Yeah, another aspect of this too, if all saints are praying for all saints, that's right. Uh, mm -hmm. Something Sister Melissa said, you know, she has specific knowledge of some of the some of the devices of the wicked one mm -hmm. in one area. Well, if we are all praying with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Look mm -hmm. at how much more ground is covered. Oh, amen. Because amen. You, have, you have an ability to, mm -hmm. to present certain things with, with additional uh, knowledge or specific knowledge to what's going on, where somebody may not know that much about Mariology, mm -hmm. but another person does. So mm -hmm. see, their prayers will be different because their knowledge mm -hmm. is greater than that. But then you have knowledge in something so that everything is getting prayed for. Amen. Amen. Yes. See, this, this is the thing that concerns me. I'm just going to speak candidly with you. If someone gets sick, 
we don't hesitate for a moment mm -hmm. to pray about that, about the specific, mm -hmm. and that's everything right about that. But I am interested in knowing why people aren't that eager to pray about spiritual okay. maladies. That's right. okay. mm -hmm. Why aren't prayers uttered for that? Yeah. That's, that's, we're talking about supplications now. Amen. Supplications. Amen. Yeah, I don't believe that anybody has ever left Babylon on their own. Somebody on yes. the outside had to ask or make the supplication on their behalf, <laughs> yeah. and God heard them and delivered yeah. the other person. Now, to avoid getting off into speculation, uh -huh. Paul gives us an example uh -huh. of how to pray and what to pray for. Uh -huh. He says, and for me. All right, so now he's going uh -huh. to tell you how you pray for a certain situation. And for me. Now this year, the year this is written is roughly around 62 A.D. And Paul is in prison, probably in Rome, which is 5,000 miles away from Ephesus. All right, now that's far enough for most folk would forget all about. <laughs> Some people forget about you. If you're down the block, they forget about you. But 5,000 miles away. <coughs> but Paul's going to ask them to impact by their prayers, to impact his situation yeah. on the other side of the world. Oh, this. <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff here, I'll tell you. This opens up an avenue of divine exploitation that thrills my soul. <coughs> what do we pray for you, Paul? Oh, I pray that utterance be given to me. Amen. Pretty specific, huh? No generalities here. Utterance. That utterance. Mm -hmm. Some versions read that words may be given me to me. The New Revised Standard Verse says that a message may be given, that speech may be given, that God will give me right words to say. Murdoch says that a language may be given, implying that he might speak in another in the appropriate language even. Now, Jesus once said to his disciples, and I think probably Paul had something of this in mind. He said, you will be brought before governors. I mean, they weren't, acc they weren't accustomed to this kind of. <laughs> You'll be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak. It shall be given you the same hour what you shall speak. This is doubtless the kind of thing Paul is thinking about. He doesn't know if he's going to appear before a, a, a deputy or proconsul like he did on the Isle of Crete. He may appear before a Felix or an Agrippa or a high priest like Caiaphas. But wherever I am, pray that I'll not be silent. I'll know what to say. I'll know, pray, see, there's a prayer and supplication for all saints. Ever. Here's a specific one. How about the brother Larry Jamon, brother Mugadam Zia, mm -hmm. brother, brother Kurum Bashir, mm -hmm. brother Samuel Thomas, brother Eugene Morris? Don't you know that there are going to come circumstances when their own natural resources will fail them? Mm -hmm. We pray, Lord, give them something to say. Supplicating for all saints. Brother Gibbon, yes. This point of the specificity in prayer. Uh, whenever you pray for a brother or sister, <coughs> you are, you're laboring together with them. Mm -hmm. And so if you're able to give general prayers because you don't know specifically, you're still laboring with them. Mm -hmm. But the more specific yeah. you're able to get into their ministry, you are a worker together with them. Amen. Amen. Even if your hand isn't physically touching it. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> yeah, I might add too, I, very frequently when I talk to people, they say, we pray for your fellowship. And they pray for the people that they hear mm -hmm. on, the, on the MP3s and, and stuff. They, 
they and they they'll say what they pray about. Mm -hmm. They'll they'll say that the Lord will continue to bless us with yeah. truth, mm -hmm. so that they can continue to receive. Mm -hmm. You see the see the marvel of it all. Paul applies it here. There you are, five thousand miles away. Here I am over here in prison. I'm in prison. I'm asking you to pray that when my time comes to speak, I'll know it and God will give me what to say. Yeah. I personally have experienced this several times. Maybe you have too. We pray this. This is, this is the weapon of all prayer. See, this is outdoing these principalities and powers that would try and crush us all with discouragement and things like this. Uh -huh. And we pray that, well, that he doesn't end there that I may open my mouth boldly, fearlessly make it known, confidently. See, it's not enough to just speak. That's not enough. It calls to speak boldly. And I'm going to tell you, as politely as I can, I don't think you can whisper boldly. Just in case you may wonder what I think about that. Silence is a sign of not being sure. Uh -huh. yep. Or of shame. Or a shade of shame, that's true too. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Open my mouth boldly. Knowing that he's, what he's saying is contrary to the people he's speaking to. He's not talking about preaching to saints. Boldly, he calls the saints, he sees, I can't do this of myself, so I'm going to call the saints to my side. I'm going to get the other part of the army. I'm going to get some of the army involved here with me. He doesn't in there make that I might make known the mystery of the gospel. Make known a mystery, see? <laughs> well, it's hard to make known a mystery mm -hmm. if you don't know it, particularly. Other versions say God's mysterious plan that the good news is for the Jews and Gentiles alike. That was something uniquely mm -hmm. ex extended instruction was given to Paul on this. Now Paul declared this mystery to the Ephesians, so we kind of get an idea of what he's talking about. He, he told them about the mystery. He said it was God was going to bring together all things into one. That, see, that's part of the mystery. Some people think things are falling apart. Mm -hmm. Scripture says God is bringing things Amen. together. Yeah. <laughs> quite a difference. It's quite a difference in those two assessments, isn't it? Yeah. Bring together all things. He said uh, another that the Gentiles will be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of God's promise. I'm making that known that yes, for 1,500 years the Jews were God's exclusive people and everybody else it looked like they were just forgot. But here's God's purpose to bring them, bring from the forgotten ones, bring from the illuminated ones and make them into one body. Yes. Of course, if God has written off the Jews, that's, you're not likely to be, be, be able to make one body out of Jew and Gentile. <laughs> Oh, those simpletons that teach that. I was laughed at because I believed that the local institution, I was laughed at publicly because I said the Jews were going to be converted. Yeah. Well, I did have the last laugh on that, I'll have to tell you. I thought to myself, if someone's going to be embarrassed, it sure really shouldn't be me. Now he desires to make known abroad with great boldness and confidence this mystery. <coughs> He's in Rome. See, God doesn't say to here, I want you to just expose Nero's emperor. I want you to tell the people about Nero, how bad he is. Yeah, he, was, he was bad. He's the one that had Paul beheaded, as a matter of fact. I want you to tell them about that Nero and what he's done, how he's persecuted the saints, I had been unjust, I was a wicked man. 
Down with Nero! Yeah? No, he said that, and went into the message. He said, I'm going to make known some in Caesar's household are going to believe. Yeah. Some in Caesar's household are going to hear this. I took boldness not to preach it yeah. in Caesar's household. Amen. But he did. <coughs> so he calls the church now, use the weapon of all prayer, supplicate for me, so I can make known the mystery of the gospel, preaching it boldly and confidently, because I'm an ambassador. Uh, in bonds. <laughs> See, that is a contradictory term. An ambassador that's in bonds, you know, that, that doesn't make sense. In other words, you'll say an ambassador in chains, Christ representative in prison. The ambassador is a representative of another country who's been commissioned to deliver a message to this country to which he's an ambassador to seek some relation between that country and the one that sent them. Yeah. I'm an ambassador. I'm an ambassador of Christ, he says another place. Mm -hmm. We got a message from Christ we're delivering. It's a message of amnesty. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's a message of amnesty. Yeah. Then if people just receive it, they'll be free. Yeah, yeah. I've been coming to announce this. I'm an ambassador. Brethren, I'm in bonds right now. <laughs> according to the flesh that wasn't conducive mm -hmm. he didn't say pray that I may be freed from the bonds he said pray that uh, I may speak boldly whether I got a chain on or not yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. you know they brought Paul to Agrippa in chains mm -hmm. yeah. but his mouth wasn't chained that I might speak boldly. I'm an ambassador in bonds. I want to speak with what God, I want the message God gives me, I want to speak it boldly mm -hmm. as I ought, Amen. as I ought to speak. Mm -hmm. See, there's an appropriate way to speak when you speak for God. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's right. It's to be with boldness, mm -hmm. making it known the particular message God has given to be declared. I understand that sometimes we don't feel up to it. That's where the other, it's where the rest of the household comes in now. The rest of the household comes in, they supplicate that the brother be able to speak with boldness, confidence, make known the truth as he ought to speak. You'll not be intimidated. See, that's traced back to these people praying the, using the weapon of all prayer. This is Paul talking of. It's him. Much more it's us mm -hmm. who speak for Christ. We urge people to do this. See, here's something Babylon does. Babylon isolates the minister from the people. Yeah. It's just a dumbed-down version of Catholicism. Yeah. Yeah. They isolate the minister from the people. And the minister more or less operates on his own. But in the kingdom of God, the minister's not operating on his own. Yeah, amen. He's depending amen. on the involvement of the saints. Yes, not just the saints with him, the saints around the world. Yeah. So we think about these brethren that we're acquainted with. <coughs> Some of them have actually come here. We've met them. Some we've gone there. We know that there's a lot to be done. And you may tend to be discouraged because there's so much to be done. You may be tempted to despair, say, what's the use? No matter what, oh, you can't do that. You've been, you're in an army. Amen. Army's not to go home and cry and lay down their weapons. Mm -hmm. Need to sally forth. That's right. If there's not many of us, so be it. Mm -hmm. Go out into it, supplicate for all saints everywhere. Pray that they might stand. Pray that they might speak. Pray that the forces of darkness might be repelled. Pray that false doctrines might fall. Pray that their hearts may be encouraged. See, that's the weapon of all prayer. <coughs> and we've been called into that. Now to me, I'm still meditating on this text. This, there's a lot here. 
the, the greatness and grandeur of it is seen in the fact that Paul takes it and applies it right to himself personally. Right to himself personally, he tells you. You might think, well, Paul's strong enough. He's been around for a while, 20-some years. He's been preaching. He's, oh, he says, see, that God doesn't ex accept anything that comes from the flesh. Yeah. Right. Not a thing. And you can't turn spirituality on and off. Yeah. Amen. You can't do that. And yet you're, you're required to be consistent, mm -hmm. but you sense in yourself I'm not sure, I'm not sure I'm able to be consistent. Now enters the army. The army prays, supplicates that you'll be consistent, be able to stand. There's people, there's people in other countries that are praying for us. They tell us, some people have three-day prayer vigils for this fellowship right here. They pray and fast for three days, periodically, for this fellowship. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the major inroads we've experienced is because of those prayers. Yes, amen. Amen. Now we can reciprocate yes. see, and pray for these brethren that, uh, shall we say, are less fortunate. Mm -hmm. But God, God can deal with this. Mm -hmm. amen. I'll quit there. Any of you have a word you'd like to add? Uh, you're talking about the we're an army, and you know, armies not in the army. Not everyone's the same rank. I know. There's there's the leaders, and they they they're, they're <coughs> big thinkers. They think the whole the battle out before we ever started, and they 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 strategically place the soldiers in certain areas, and before they ever initiate the battle. Yeah. And that's what we have in the kingdom of God. There's right. certain people that have the ability to be able to foresee the evil. They can see where this is leading to, yeah. and so they position certain, yeah. you know, the saints around it. But they have that capacity, and um, those who can lead, they should lead, and those who can't should be actively supporting the leader. That's right. Yeah. Yes. I, you know, I like that thought about now. Here comes Paul. He's preaching a message of freedom, and he himself is in chains. Right. Yeah. That's just like the Lord to do. And Amen. you know, uh, if we were to take an ambassador from another country and lock him up, well, there would be a war. Well, I know. You, know, you just don't do that. Uh, and I the way I feel about it too. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, thinking about this. You know, we've all we we know the preach. We want to preach about what's going on, and mm -hmm. in, in the spirit of Babylon, yeah. we want to get up there and preach about it, and 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 point it out, and 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 preach against it. Had thought so much about. We should uh, balance that out with as much prayer or more. That's right. I know. I know the preaching down. I got that down, but I hadn't thought too much about the praying about it. I like yeah. that. That'll help the preaching about yeah. it. Well, I, I think that uh, uh, we we probably need to talk about a, a lot of this some more. Oh yeah. This See that this is and, addressing the cause. Uh -huh. <coughs> these principalities and powers have caused mm -hmm. this situation. Yeah. And, and something else too. Now, if we're going if we want to preach against Babylon and we're going to pray. Pray about it. Then we got to make sure that we're disengaged from it. Too. That's exactly you right. Know? And uh, and you know and, and just and and be bold. And maybe we need to start naming some names and things too. That, I mean, that's a personal thing, but you know I agree right. with. Uh, well, yeah, there, there, when the, Paul named names, it was people that were leading other people yeah. astray. The well known yeah. to the Hymenians and Philetus and Philologies and Herm, Her, Hermenes and. Alexander and he, Diotrephes, yeah, Paul. Right, right. So, it's, it, but these are people that were significant deceivers. Yeah, we try to be polite yeah. and everything, but I don't know if you know. Maybe you can only go so wouldn't. far. Yeah. yeah. Politeness sometimes has to yield to boldness. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yes, Sister Barb. I was considering this point earlier that what brother. Tony brought up about the preaching and prayer. It's like the prayer is fortifying the message. That's yes, right. You speak, making it to where it's mm -hmm. not in vain. Mm -hmm. But if, if there is a, a brother or sister who desires to be more effectual in their prayers and laboring together with the different ministers and ministries happening, mm -hmm. the Lord is faithful to grant to you the ability to do so. Mm -hmm. I was considering that this trip with Brother Aaron and yes. Brother Michael, all of us had a desire to pray, mm -hmm. and a lot of us have this desire to pray very specifically yeah. for things, you know, the meetings and the travel and the fellowship with the brethren there. 
And the Lord continued to grant us these specific things yeah. that we hadn't thought of before. But as we were praying, yeah. the Lord opened up these different areas and thought for us so that we were able to pray more specifically Amen. for the things that were happening. And Amen. they were able to adapt. They didn't, they did something, the environment wasn't what they thought, mm -hmm. but they were able to adapt. That's Amen. part of these effectual prayers and supplications, see, that I may speak as I ought to speak, so there's certain conditions that you, the message you prepared may be completely out of order, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you got to say something. Yeah. Here's the rest of the army, see. Amen. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sister Annie. I was considering when you we were talking about how um, we should be praying for others who are in bondage to help them fight their battles. Um, I, I was reminded of Abraham when Lot and his family were in Sodom and Gomorrah and he prayed to God that the godly that were in the city that they'd be saved, thinking of his family. Consider that the, that family wouldn't have been saved unless Abraham had prayed that they would. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful that you'll give us a part in this great redemptive work and part of the warfare. We, we love being in the army that follows Jesus. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you'll assist us in improving and being effective in our prayers and supplication for all saints to broaden our perspectives and Consider how valuable we are to the rest of the body and the rest of the body is to us. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.